This is Marlene Rabu from uh, Batang. Uh, I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Sela Sadakau from uh, Vatukola. I only listen to Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Vale and I'm working at Golden Crow Resort and I love listening to Gold FM because it plays a really wide range of classic I'm Sein Isakio from Kashmir Lotoka. I like Gold FM, but only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Jackie Spate. This is FBC News. Tonight, Education Ministry works on putting robust methods for students. Elections Office registers students for 2018. And later on in sports, Fiji 7's rep Piyot Thuwai to take up overseas contract. District education officers across the Central and Eastern Division have been reminded to look at the continued development of curriculum in collaboration with university standards. Education Minister Dr. Mahendra Reddy says the development of Fiji is dependent on a robust and responsive education sector. Maggie Boyle tells us more. These district education officers are collectively responsible for close to 400 schools. Education Minister Dr. Mahendra Reddy reminded them about the importance of working together. We have to start from the primary school, high school system, which will then feed into the universities. If you want good quality products out of universities, we also need to ensure that we do our job. One of the key priorities is to initiate a fact-finding mission to establish the early identification of children at risk of leaving school with an estimated 10,000 students involved in absenteeism. That what's happening to our children? And if our children are coming to school, are we able to retain them? And if we are not able to retain them, what can we do to keep them within school? And what can we do more to get them from uh, where they are, out of school, back to school? And ensuring no child is left behind, an inclusive education toolkit has been specifically designed to assist all schools. We actually target is the teachers in the mainstream schools uh, because we are going inclusive in our approach now. Uh, students with disabilities are not only attending the special schools, but they are also um, attending the mainstream schools. Uh, therefore, the toolkit uh, will be something that the teachers will use to guide them on how to teach students with special needs in mainstream schools. The two-day annual workshop is focused on ensuring educational leadership. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. 78 students of Suva Grammar Secondary School registered to vote for the first time this morning for the upcoming 2018 elections. A team from the Fijian Elections Office have begun targeting schools to register students over the age of 18 who will be eligible to vote in the next elections. Ellen Stalls has the story. 18-year-old Eunice Rainima was one of many students from Suva Grammar Secondary School who registered to vote today. Well, firstly, when I heard that I was going to vote, uh, it really, like, um, I was excited at first because uh, one indicated that I was, you know, old enough to have a say for myself in this country. Supervisor of Elections Mohammed Saneem says the 2014 general elections registered majority of first-time voters below the age of 30. Registering students now um, allows uh, us to capture as many people in the role as possible to avoid uh, last-minute registrations in 2018. Uh, we also want to uh, early on expose uh, young adults into the electoral system political uh, thinking so that uh, when it is election time, they are more comfortable. Sanim says so far they've already registered 20,000 people who will be voting for the first time. The numbers are expected to increase following this registration. We estimate that uh, newly eligible uh, voters for the next election will uh, be in the range of about 30 to 45,000. So that's the new list of people that will be in the role. Ten other schools were visited by the Fijian Elections Office teams today in the Central, Western and Northern Division. Ellen Stalls, FBC News. A ship which is equipped to enable persons with disabilities to sail is in the country for the first time. Britain's SV Tenacious is 60 metres long and caters for all, and now this includes Fijians. 
Farzana Nisha has more. Eight young Fijians, including four disabled participants, have been given the opportunity to sail as crew on board the SV Tenacious around the country. The Tenacious is set up so that it has uh, lots of equipment that can help people who are partially sighted, uh, who might be um, uh, uh, deaf, they might be, have different um, physical disabilities, including people in wheelchairs, and they can all play a full part sailing that big ship. Participants say they are looking forward to this exciting trip as their sponsors are helping them prepare. Never really uh, been on the sea for more than a few hours, so the prospect of being out there for five days is very exciting. And of course expecting a bit of hard work. I can't wait for that day to come for me to board onto that ship. As Vitanacious will be spending four weeks in Fiji waters, of this, five days will be with these participants. After four weeks, the Tenacious will be leaving for New Caledonia and Australia to do the same kind of work. Farzana Nisha, FBC News. A director of Tembara Halal Meats appeared in the Super Magistrates Court this afternoon, charged with three counts of theft amounting to about $2 million. Mohammed Janif is alleged to have stolen the money belonging to the company last year. Prosecution did not object to bail. However, strict bail conditions, which include two sureties, who signed a bail bond of $5,000. Janif is to report to the Nalsori police station every Saturday and has surrendered his passport in court. Namita Khatri is the new Fiji High Commissioner to India. She was commissioned by the President Major General Chiochi Kondrote at the State House today. Prior to her appointment as High Commissioner, Khatri served as Deputy Permanent Representative in Fiji's permanent mission to the United Nations in Geneva in September 2014. Khatri completed her bachelor's from the University of Waikato, New Zealand in 2000 and postgraduate diploma from the University of the South Pacific. I, Namita Khatri, swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the Republic of Fiji, that I will obey, observe, uphold and maintain the constitution of the Republic of Fiji and all other laws of Fiji. She has also completed her master's from the Australian National University and postgraduate qualification from the TMC ESSA Institute in Netherlands. Coming up on FBC News Sports, sorry, News, Singatoka Town sets focus on more developments. Sam Rocks. My name is Denasa and I'm from Lutoka and I love listening to Today FM. My name is Mulamila, I work at Golden Point Resort. I love listening to Today FM, it rocks in Rakiraki. I'm Mary from Mandera. I love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. We love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. Welcome back. This is FBC News. The Singatoka Town Council has revealed a major development plan to possibly attract more tourists to the Salad Bowl. This was revealed to FBC News by Council Chief Executive Tulsi Ram. Ali Kimbia has the details. Known as the rugby town of Fiji, now Singatoka is embarking on a new development plan to further boost its tourism industry. The moment we are talking with the ministry, the gov uh, local government ministry, uh, for, uh, for funding for our riverbank development. They have actually uh, said yes uh, and we have submitted our plans and it is uh, in process. And, so, and once we uh, develop the riverbank, it will be like 200 meters uh, riverbank, uh, just opposite Tapus. Ram says this million dollar project should help in attracting more tourists and a possibility of hosting major events. It will be a site to visit for tourists and we want to bring uh, afternoon uh, programs in the area. It will be you know, happening uh, like once a week and we want to get all the tourists to uh, come to town in the afternoon. We want to open the town in the afternoon. The project has been welcomed by majority of the hotels along the Coral Coast and work is expected to start next month. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. Residents on Koro Island that were severely affected by tropical cyclone Winston can now have proper roofs above their heads with the arrival of building materials. Building materials for the Help the Homes initiative has arrived in Koro Island for the first time over the weekend. 
The materials have been distributed to all the applicants of the initiative from the different villages that were affected by the Category 5 cyclone. Residents of the affected villages have commended the government's assistance in their answer to quick rehabilitation. Members of the RFMF who are still doing rehabilitation work on the island are expected to assist in the rebuild. The Minister for Rural and Maritime Development and National Disaster Management, Inia Seruratu, today signed a memorandum of understanding with his Indonesian counterpart, the head of National Disaster Management Authority. The MOU includes the exchange of skills in terms of natural disaster resilience and the culture of national disaster management. The visit William Rampengili visited our country together with his Indonesian delegates to also get a glimpse of the progress of rehabilitation works at Queen Victoria School. Torrential rain and high winds battered Australia's east coast yesterday, leaving up to 26,000 homes without power, while flooding forced hundreds of people into evacuation centres. Sports is up next. Here's Jamie with the very latest. Thank you, Jackie, and good evening in sports tonight. Sunia Koto to lead flying Fijians. And Suva gets boost for Fiji Fact. This and more coming up. Radio Fiji ki Sundar Sundar Yado ka Kazana, Ek Dam Bachpan ke Din Yad Kara de Tihi. Amar Nan Joni Nido hai, Amrasa hai Maloromi, our hum. Taxi driver hai, I'm sometimes up and taxi in a radio due to some type of them. Hum singer toka ke hai, Hamanam hai Rosie, Hamong ya pe radio Fiji to Sunda. Ram Ram, my name is Prasad Voltao, Tawatamo Kui, Ratao, my Jabi Suna radio Fiji to Sunda. Radio Fiji to Desh Kit Harkan. The Vodafone Fiji 7's team has long endured the vicious cycle of its elite players being lured by lucrative overseas contracts. Now another seven superstars confirmed in an exclusive interview with FPC Sports that the Rio Olympics will be his last appearance for Fiji. Ali Kimbia reports. After six years on the World Rugby 7 series, Lenki Piotuai is finally moving on to greener pastures. I have come to a point now that I am proud to say that this year will be my last year to represent Fiji in Sevens Rugby and I will head overseas to play rugby. The 32-year-old barman confirming he's got two clubs hot on his heels, although the offload master held back details of the offers. There are two clubs that are currently discussing with me, one from Australia and the other from France, but I will decide which one. Uh, I will go to after the Rio Olympic Games. Tuai says the main focus is the Rio Olympic Games and he is ready to put his body on the line to bid for a gold medal at the Olympics. I will do whatever it takes and I am also willing to take the risk of training hard every day just to bring that gold medal home as it will be a good farewell for me. With two World Series title and a possible gold medal at the Rio Olympic Games, the veteran is ready to move on. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. John McKee has announced that Vodafone Flying Fijians veteran hooker Sunia Koto will captain the team at this year's Pacific Nations Cup. Vasnil Prasad with more from the Fiji camp. Billy Dua. Displaying the role of captain, Sunia Koto will lead the Flying Fijians team in the Pacific Nations Cup this year. Sunia has always been a very important member of the senior players group, so so it's a step up for him. But but I think you know he, he's been very involved with the senior players group. You know his playing form, particularly in, in the World Cup, really warrants him um, holding that position. And I know that he's held in a lot of respect by all the players, and you know they really listen when he when he st tells them things. Koto replaces a regular leader, Kapusingera, who is out due to club commitments, and assisting him will be Verini Kingoneva and Leone Nakarawa. It's been a, been a very, very good leader for us uh, over over the, the you know the, the two years I've been working with the team. A good compliment there now, and there was you could really feel today that the atmosphere lifted, and and you know the it's Test match week, and the boys are really um, really primed. 
With the abundance of talent in the team, coach John McKee also test players on certain positions during training. Ben ran at 15 on a couple there, and as did Sam So we're just looking at a couple of options at fullback. Probably think you know Patrick and Patrick and um, Samasani would um, we look at them as wingers. Yes. Expect the coaching team to switch players on different positions throughout this week before they name the final 23 to face Tonga on Saturday. Ashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, two flying Fijian backline players are confident of a good outing at the PNC this year. While Nemir Kenatale comes in with a lot of experience, Crusaders player Ben Volovola will hope to shine once again for Fiji. Vashnil Prasad again with more. Seven months ago, Ben Volavola made his debut for the Flying Fijians in the Rugby World Cup. But today, Volavola is regarded as one of the experienced players in the back line. Just more confident now in myself and my game plan and learning over the last six months, learning a lot of lessons over in Christchurch and here as well, continuing to learn um, just more confidence, uh, confident in myself and my game. The 25-year-old says he has learned a lot and it's now time for him to lead the team as one of the senior players. I've uh, just been blessed to be in that environment at the Crusaders in Christchurch and uh, just hoping to um, pass that on to the players around me and continue to learn off the players here as well. With Vola Vola, another player likely to make it into the starting 15 will be halfback Nemia Kenatale. He's once again ready to fill the vacuum left by Nicola Matawalu. Uh, we have a running back line compared to uh, last uh, uh, PNC, um, so I think uh, we got a good back line uh, run, uh, running uh, this weekend. We have uh, Petty Cosmo in the wing and uh, coming again is uh, Samson Ibrivili, so our key is like uh, to be a fast wings and uh, fast balls. The duo bring in a lot of experience with them and hope the team will make a winning start against Tonga on Saturday. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. Despite the 18-13 loss to Nandranga last Saturday, the Suva rugby team still leads the Skipper Cup competition. Suva is on top with 24 points. Namosi also have 24 but sit in second spot due to points differential, followed by Naita Siri with 23. Nandi is in fourth place with 21 points, while Nandranga has 20. Meanwhile, in the lone match this Saturday, Nandi hosts Malolo at Prince Charles Park at 3 p.m. Kasabias, through its locally supplied Inco brand, has thrown its support behind the Suva football team ahead of the Vodafone Fiji Fact, which starts next week. Meanwhile, coach Gurjit Singh says his team has been training well so far and they look forward to the first tournament of the year. The capital city side will also be playing some quality build-up matches this week. Last week we had a very good uh, training session. And this week again we'll be have a tough session and try to play a few friendly games on, uh, in, the, in the weekend. We're trying to play under 20, national under 20 and um, bar for a practice game. And then the following week we have to cut down the training. Suva takes on Lautoka in the opening match of the tournament at 1 p.m. next Friday at Lambasa's Subriel Park. Fijian surfer Tevita Ngukilao bowed out in round two of the Fiji Pro International at Tavarua today. The third day of competition continues tomorrow. Suva Bowling Club officials were overwhelmed with the response for the South Pacific Bowling Carnival, which ended yesterday. Even though this year's event was one of its biggest, organizers hope to rope in even more overseas bowlers next year. Rohit Deo reports. The 60 years old South Pacific Bowling Carnival has become a pinnacle for the sport of bowls in Fiji. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, top bowlers from overseas that are here. Uh, the challenge is our uh, local bowlers, and our local bowlers have been uh, performing tremendously at the moment. And uh, in terms of competition wise, they give our local bowlers a good competition, especially our national clubs as well. Uh, and we also uh, have identified a lot of new bowlers as well from this time. A week-long tournament has attracted overseas bowlers in past years. Despite some drawbacks, the officials were pleased with the response from the visiting bowlers. The only reason why we have uh, uh, some invites this year was because, uh, like I said, Winston came along and the invites went out uh, very, very last minute. But we're hoping uh, next year the invites are ready now. We'll send the invites now and uh, next year we'll hope to see a bigger number, a bigger contingent from the overseas bowlers. Local bowlers dominated the event in both the men's and women's category this year. Expect the competition to get tougher with more interest pouring in from overseas. We've got um, new lights this year. Uh, this year we have new lights, so uh, next day we're hoping that uh, we'll actually have night games as well. This tournament also sets the platform for the bowlers who are part of the Bowls Fiji team to the World Champs. Rohit Deo, 
FBC Sports. Finally in sports tonight, former IBF, WBC and the ring heavyweight champion Larry Holmes believes Muhammad Ali's legacy was already secure long before the duo faced off for the 1980 world title. That's it from sports tonight. It's back to Jack now with business. Suvon Sale is back after a lapse of five years. FBC News hit the streets today to check out what's on offer. Close to 70 stalls have been set up on Waimana Road, Cumming Street and Mark Street. A wide variety of items are being sold at low prices with something available for every shopper. The Suvon Sale annual event's main objective this year is to contribute to the Prime Minister's Relief and Rehabilitation Fund to construct a better Fiji post-cyclone Winston. The event was opened on Saturday and will end this Saturday. Fine weather apart from brief showers was experienced over the interior and eastern parts of the country. Looking at temperatures, Lombasa was the warmest at 32 degrees, while Nandi was at 31, whereas the rest of the major centres were in the high 20s. Tomorrow it's fine apart from brief showers about the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands. It's moderate to fresh east to southeast winds with rough seas. And the further route look is for Wednesday. It's for some showers about the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands. Elsewhere possible isolated afternoon or evening showers, so it's a good idea to keep that umbrella handy. Recapping the main stories for tonight. The Education Ministry is working on putting robust methods for students in place. Elections Office registers students for 2018. And Fiji 7's rep Piu Thuai is to take up an overseas contract after the Olympics. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Results from last week's poll question, and we had asked, Should Fijians be redeployed to Sinai if the security situation improves? 76% answered yes. This week, we are asking, are you happy with the new venue for the Hibiscus Festival? Question again, are you happy with the new venue for the Hibiscus Festival? To answer, visit our FBC website, www.fbc.com.fj to have your say. And we'll have the results of that poll in our news bulletin next week, Monday. Be sure to send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. You can also find us on YouTube, FBC TV 2011 and watch the replay of FBC News on our FBC website after 8 p.m. tonight. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Jackie Spade. Good night. Adango Katonesia Tugutua, Aumonia Sagara, Aundo Wulwulta Juana TV and a market in Tawa, Aundo Talitagana, Warrona, Bula FM, and Namandu Anasia. Pulangan Fiji, nada aku pelajui materi yang mana yang naik dan bulu bulu tapi ini, aku satu kali nanti, anda tali tali na warongo, ena bola FM. Bola, bola FM, nombor dua en seri.